My coverage of Computex 2024 is brought to you by Antec, Asus, Corsair, and G-Skill. To learn more about all their new products, check out the links in the description below. We're at the Noctua booth now where they've got a bunch of new stuff. As always, let's go ahead and see what they're up to. This, my friends, is the fan of fans. This is the next generation flagship fan model of the, uh, the NF-A14, the very famous A14 X25 that's found on the NHD15 cooler, the tried and true champion of air coolers. It's the king of kings, dude. And the second gen is just around the corner. It's gonna be shipping in a couple weeks, as well as the cooler. I, I, I can't really get too deep into there because people are filming, but the new D15 is right over there. There's a demo unit doing some cool stuff. Very exciting. It's going to retail for about $150, which seems steep for an air cooler, but it is super competitive with a lot of leading AIOs. But obviously, you get none of the downsides of an AIO cooler, like water leaking or pumps failing. It's a lot more reliable. When we saw them last year, they were dealing with some issues. Uh, they were trying to solve the problem of, of the frame warping. There were some warping points over long-term use, but they managed to reinforce the frame and now we have a very polished version that is not going to warp over time. It is, of course, using a liquid crystal polymer fan blade so that it retains its shape over long periods of use. That allows them to get the blade extra close to the inner frame, which is going to increase performance and static pressure and all that good stuff, but there's zero risk of, of the, the blade actually warping or expanding over time and uh, eventually hitting that inner frame. Using those finer materials goes a long way. It's looking pretty good. And it's actually gonna be offered in three different models, three different SKUs at launch. Even though all three models are actually gonna be compatible with both AMD and Intel CPUs, the IHS on either or is slightly different. AM5 chips are completely flat, right? Very flat IHS. But then you've got a concave design on the LGA 1700 chips. I'm not exactly sure why, no one's been able to confirm that with me, but that obviously means that the cold plate for coolers is, is gonna be more, is generally gonna favor one design more than the other. So Noctua was like, instead of just making one SKU that sort of skirts the line between both, like a nice middle ground, why don't we just offer three different SKUs that are completely tailored to whatever CPU or configuration the users have. And they're breaking it down with these three options, HBC, heatsink, standard heatsink, and the LBC. Right now we're looking at AM5 CPUs with a relatively flat IHS. You can see that the HBC heatsink, it's got the most curvature, which isn't gonna be well suited for this chip, but it is gonna be suited perfectly for Intel LGA 1700 chips. So you can see there's a lot more heat transfer going on when you're using the proper model SKU. The standard heat sink is more of a sweet spot area, so we're getting a lot more heat transfer here on the, the AMD CPU, even more so if you actually add the offset, because the CCD, which is what needs to be cooled essentially the most, uh, is, is, is not exactly centered on the chip. So if you offset the heat sink in order to accommodate that, then you can actually get a little bit more cooling potential, actually a lot more cooling potential with the offset. Standard heat sink is still doing a good amount of work, a good amount of performance and cooling for the LGA 1700 chip. And then finally you have the LBC heat sink. This is perfectly catered for AMD chips. A lot more heat transfer going on now whether you're doing it with an offset or not. And obviously this would be the least optimal layout for Intel CPUs. As you can see that uh, we're, we're pretty much flat at this point. We're not accommodating that concave curve on the IHS. So we're not exactly getting the best heat transfer. But the fact that they're giving you options and also very strong, clear marketing from what I've been told for especially new users who have no idea what cooler to get, they're gonna clearly label that on the retail packaging so users don't get too confused. Although they did say, if you just wanna set it and forget it, you don't really wanna to have to think about what the optimal option is for your particular CPU, that the standard heatsink is gonna be a nice middle ground for both AMD and Intel chips. And they're all gonna be releasing at the same time for the same price. Now here's a Chromex version. Not only is it Chromex and all blacked out, but it's also square. So they're gonna offer this in the, uh, the circular option along with the, uh, the cooler of course, they'll be included with the cooler, but also square options. So if you want a more traditional case fan or add this to your own radiator of choice, the square version of the next gen A14 is gonna come out later this year in September, I believe, but the Chromax variant will be releasing sometime Q1 next year if everything stays on track. These things can get delayed sometimes very easily because 
uh, even if there's one minor tweak that they have to make to, to any of these fans, they have to start the, the lifespan testing all over again, which can take months and months and months. So, uh, but you know, that's, that's what happens when you're, when you're the best, when you're the number one fan maker on the market, um, you, you spend the extra time to make sure everything is dialed in just right before you release a product. This looks like an AIO at first glance, but it is not an AIO. It's a two-phase thermofysen cooler, which I had no idea what that was when they told me. I was like, you, you guys need to really explain this to me. What is happening here? And they have this nifty chart. Noctua is really good at having charts that, that explain things to idiots like me. So the way that this is working is, it's like a phase change cooler in a way. They have this uh, the CPU block, which they call an evaporator, and it does exactly that. It essentially takes the heat from the CPU and it converts whatever liquid is, is coming in from, from the inlet into vapor. So it evaporates it into vapor and it's, it's gravity fed. So the vapor comes up and it gets put into this condenser. There's a condenser in here that essentially cools the vapor enough until it becomes liquid again. And then the liquid travels back down into the evaporator and the whole process starts all over. So we're essentially seeing kind of like half liquid, half vapor occurring in this, in this device. And they're actually saying performance is comparable to an AIO, which is very compelling, but you have none of the downsides that you do with a traditional liquid cooler. Like I was just mentioning, a pump failing uh, or water leaking. We don't know what the price is gonna be yet. They're still developing this. There's still a lot of work to be done in testing. This could be coming out maybe next year, if we're lucky. Over here we have not just a beautiful looking power supply, but uh, a, new, a new addition from Noctua in collaboration with the folks at Seasonic. This is actually a Seasonic power supply, but a beautiful collaboration where they've actually added one of their very own fans here. This is the, uh, the Seasonic Prime TX 1600 Noctua Edition PSU. There's an NFA12 X20 fan fan inside, custom designed, highly optimized grill. The grill is, is beautiful, but it's also functional as well. It allows a lot more air in. I, I asked them briefly, you know, why did you decide to, to pair with Seasonic with this particular model of unit? And their answer was basically because Seasonic has a lot of the same high quality principles that they do. You know, they see eye to eye on a lot of things and how they operate their business. But additionally, the wattage, the 1600 wattage means there's a lot of waste heat here. If, if we were dealing with like an 850 watt power supply, there wouldn't really be much to improve. The, the fan's not gonna be spinning all that fast to begin with. So, so the higher wattage really allows Noctua to really shine its products in the best possible light. An absolutely gorgeous unit, fully modular, 80 plus titanium rated, and it's ATX 3.1 supported as well. Noctua recently launched their, their home series of products, which uh, this is not super new. They, they released this, they announced this a couple weeks ago, but still worth checking out because it's pretty fresh still. They've essentially created a way for you to use Noctua fans for everyday uses, for more practical uses beyond the PC. For example, a desk fan. How about a nice desk fan? You know, just point it at your face while you're working. You know, if it's, it's a hot summer day, get a nice, put a nice Noctua fan in there. And they've also got this, this wind tunnel funnel to help channel the airflow directly at you. It is surprising how much air this is moving and how cool it feels. It's pretty impressive. And it does have mounts at the bottom, so you could you know, mount this under your desk, you can mount it to the top of your desk, side of your desk. This is what that frame looks like without that wind tunnel. And it, you can be expanded if you want to accommodate 120 or 140 millimeter fans, you can easily do that. It's a very sturdy frame. It's got a lot of heft to it. Obviously the fans don't weigh a lot, so uh, you don't want it shifting around too much if you're not gonna be mounting it permanently. And all this is modular. They're gonna be selling, like, you know, they'll, they'll sell this as a kit, but you can also buy the, uh, the, the, the tunnel separately from the frame, from the fan, of course. And then they've also got these guys. It's a fan with large rubber corners and a large rubber base that you can actually put above or below devices. So they actually have a nifty video. Let's see if we can catch it really quick. So of course you could just use that as a typical desk fan. But I think what's more interesting is you can put it underneath, let's say your home theater PC or on top of a home theater PC or any PC for that matter for additional cooling. You could probably rest a laptop pretty easily on some of these as well. A lot of possibilities here. I'm already considering mounting a couple of these in my entertainment center 
to cool down my HTPC. Because right now, I have to leave my entertainment center doors open, otherwise the PC will overheat. But if I can create some ventilation in there and have a couple of these mounted, that could be a pretty cool solution that might make for a neat video. So maybe you'll see some content on that later. Who knows? That is going to wrap it up for my coverage of the Noctua booth here at Computex 2024. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more content coming at you really soon.